I'm Paige. Welcome back to my kitchen. You're watching the next episode of my new series, Dough and It with Paigey. Today is bread day and I am so excited because we are going to be making the fourth recipe from this book, Bread Baking for Beginners by Bonnie O'Hara. And the recipe today will be a panned loaf. So put your cast iron Dutch ovens away and pull out your loaf pans because we're gonna be making some delicious sandwich bread. So this recipe is actually one of the recipes in the book that doesn't have a picture of what it's supposed to look like. I'm very excited to make this loaf of bread with you guys today to show you guys how it's going to look. This loaf is going to be a great loaf for sandwiches because all of the slices are going to be right around the same size and shape. For this recipe, you can use a glass loaf pan or a metal loaf pan. Both will work fine. All right, we're gonna jump right in and start mixing our ingredients. As always, we'll want to weigh out our ingredients before we start. Today, we will need our water temperature right around 80 degrees. We're going to start by mixing the yeast with the water until it's nice and bubbly. Now we're going to add the flour on top of the water and the salt on top of the flour. That will keep the salt from coming in direct contact with the yeast, which can inhibit a rise. And we're gonna jump right in and start mixing. Make sure you really get in here, squeeze the dough, try to stretch it, get everything off the sides and the bottom. starting to get really stretchy and that is letting me know that it is mixed well and all of the ingredients are well combined. All right, I'm gonna let this hang out for about 20 minutes so that the flour can absorb some of that water. We're now going to go all around the dough, stretching it and folding it to meet the other side. We will do this until it has tightened up and isn't so loose and stretchy. And I think for this dough, once around is going to be just fine. Now we're going to place a floured kitchen towel over our bowl and let it rise for about an hour and a half. All right, so our dough's been sitting for about an hour and a half and it doesn't look quite ready. It doesn't really have a lot of air bubbles and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what it looks like. Usually we would see a lot of air bubbles throughout and I'm only seeing a few. Um, so I'm gonna give this about 30 more minutes to let it rise a little bit longer and we'll be back to check it in a minute. All right, our dough has been rising for about two hours. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn my dough onto a floured countertop so that we can shape it into a loaf. I'm going to lightly flour my countertops here. I'm gonna turn my dough out of the bowl and I want the side that is in contact with the bowl now up facing me. I'm now going to give the dough a set of letter folds. I'm going to start from the top and fold this down about halfway. Do the same technique from the bottom. Fold it to the middle and seal it to itself. Seam from the left side and same from the right. If your dough feels very relaxed, you can go ahead and give this another set of folds. we're going to be skipping the proofing basket altogether. Instead, it's actually going to be proofing inside of a greased loaf pan. I have went ahead and greased this with some cooking spray. You can also use oil or butter if needed. This is going to be proofing seam side down inside of the loaf pan. 
We're going to let this proof inside of the loaf pan until it starts to kind of bubble up over the sides of the top of the loaf pan. While my dough is proofing, I'm gonna go ahead and set my oven to 375 degrees. While my oven is preheating, I'm gonna go ahead and move one of my oven racks to the bottom of my oven. My heating element is located at the top of my oven, so please be mindful of where yours is located. If yours is located at the bottom, you may not wanna move your oven rack to the very bottom of the oven because it could potentially burn the bottom. If your heating element is located at the top like mine, you should be safe with your oven rack on the bottom shelf. For these loaves of bread, we're going to need to brush the top with either an egg wash or water. So what I've done is I've actually made a separate loaf of bread as well. And I'm going to test using both egg wash and water. You'll need a pastry brush to brush the tops of the loaves of bread. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a comparison of both loaves that I have prepared right now. Here is our loaf in the glass loaf pan and as you can see it really has bubbled over the top. I think we're going to put the egg wash on this one. Now this pan is a little bit bigger so it didn't bubble up quite as much but this is our metal loaf pan and I think we're going to put the water on this one. To make the egg wash all you do is combine an egg with a couple of tablespoons of milk and whisk that together. For water all you do turn on your faucet put some in a bowl. When using water to brush the top of your loaf of bread, you'll want to be very generous with the amount of water that you're using. Now we're gonna put these in the oven and bake them for about 45 minutes. We're gonna check them at 20 minutes though to make sure that the top isn't getting too brown. If it is getting too brown, all you'll need to do is just lay a piece of foil over the top of the bread and that'll keep it from getting too brown too quickly. All right, I've removed both loaves of bread from the oven and transferred them over to a wire rack. If you're following along with this recipe at home, just remember to take your loaf out of the loaf pan immediately and transfer it to a wire rack for cooling. If you let the loaf cool inside of the loaf pan, it's going to result in a soggy loaf that's difficult to remove from the loaf pan. Here's the loaf of bread we brushed water onto, and here is the loaf of bread that we brushed egg wash onto. Here is a profile of our egg wash loaf. And again, I think that my glass loaf pan is a little bit too small based on the looks of this. However, this looks browned, airy, crispy top. This is going to be a very good loaf of bread and I can't wait to try this one. Here's the loaf that we brushed water onto. It feels a little bit more dense than the other one and it doesn't have as crispy as a crust. I definitely think that if you are looking for a more appealing looking loaf of bread, I would say that egg wash is definitely the way to go. I ended up adding a foil cover to the egg wash loaf after about 30 minutes. I checked it at 20 and everything looked good. After about 30 minutes, it really developed a really nice brown crust and I was kind of getting scared that it was going to burn or get too brown. So I added that foil cover and it did really protect the loaf from getting too dark in the oven. As for me, I'm going to go ahead and go slice into these loaves and make myself a sandwich. I'm very excited to taste these. Be sure to tune in next week because we are going to be trying one of my favorite recipes from this book. It is a simple, no need focaccia. I'm also going to be making a different variation of the focaccia with olives and cheese, and I can't wait to show you guys. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe, and thanks again for watching Doing It With Paigey. See you guys next week. Mm -hmm.